We're so happy to announce today the release of the new Anim School Picker. The Anim School Picker is a way to select things and control things inside of Maya, just like the ones they use at the big studios. And pretty soon, you're going to wonder how you ever lived without it because it's wonderful. And one of the greatest things about it is absolutely free for friends of Anim School. With Anim School Picker, you can select things easily in Maya by just clicking on the buttons. You can also rectangle select them. You can execute MEL commands or Python scripts. You can zoom and pan just like you would in Maya with the same hotkeys. You can move the buttons around. You can even make buttons that select components, vertices, and polygons in Maya. And you can easily reuse your pickers for other characters. When you select something in Maya, Animescale Picker shows you what you have selected. It's a great way to animate without having all the clutter of the control curves. And now it's available for free download. Once you have the Anim School Picker installed, uh, you should see an icon for it in your shelf, hopefully, and uh, that, if you set it right, should look about like that. And uh, in order to use it, we, we're going to bring up uh, the Malcolm character from Anim School, but you can use it for any character, as long as it isn't in direct uh, competition with Anim School, that is an online school or online classes. And uh, there are a few other restrictions which you can read about on the download page. But um, let's go ahead and get Malcolm in. So we need to reference him in. We can't just um, import. We can't just open the scene. Uh, it has to be referenced. It has, has to have that namespace. So we're going to go to this uh, option box right here. And we're going to see that it says uh, use namespaces. We're going to do it with the file name. You could just have it be a specific thing. You could tell it to be Malcolm or whatever. But we're just going to do the file name. That's fine. We'll get a reference and we'll pick the latest version of Malcolm, which is now uh, version 1.09. It's uh, very similar to 1.0, except uh, the shoulders are a little more stable. Once it comes in, it's uh, kind of tiny, so we're going to kind of zoom in here. All right, so now we're ready to launch the picker. Sometimes people talk about uh, lar super large joints showing up here. It's really easy just to hide the joints so you can resize them as well, but we're just going to turn them off. In fact, we'll turn off everything except for the curves and the polygons. That's really all we need for, for this rig. So this is the Anim School Picker interface. You can make it be any size, but this is um, it's, a, it's designed to be about this big, but you can certainly use it larger and make larger pickers. Um, like I said, you can make it for any character, and first I'll show you a couple of of features for make for making your own pickers. Um, of course, it's all based on the object name. Uh, control lid top left is the name of this object. And if we just right click here and say add one button, we're going to get a button that's the size and color that we've set. So here's that button. We can move it around if we hold down the uh, control key and just drag it with our left mouse button. And um, we can select it just by clicking on it. We can also drag select it. So let's say we also get this bottom one here. I'm just going to click over here and right click and add a button. So now we have two buttons. I can drag select them both. I can um, select the one or the other. I can either click on it or draw a little rectangle to get them. If I want to uh, deselect I can hit the control. If I want to reselect I can hit the control again. Sort of add to the selection that way. And uh, I can do things like right click and then align these uh, vertically, or I can uh, align them horizontally like that. So say they're like this, and get them to line up. So that's good. Also, if we have multiple buttons, multiple things selected, we can make another button that uh, includes not just that one, but many buttons. So we're just going to add a button, but this one is a button that selects both of these other ones. And the nice thing is that when I select one of these buttons here, it uh, highlights in gray over here. And if I select both of them, look at that, it turns white. So that means that everything is now selected. So I can select this, or if I select those two, they, then that turns white. And then only one of them, it's gray. So this shows that it's a partial selection, super helpful for um, knowing what, what you have selected. Another way to do it is if you were to um, select those two items or say a couple of more, 
items, you could do add many buttons. And what that does is it stacks them up. So now I created not a button for multiple ones, but one for everything you have selected. This is a great way to find out if you've got a picker button for, for everything in the scene. You can you can just make a whole stack of, uh, you know, 100 buttons or whatever to see what what uh, what all the possible uh, controllers are and if you have buttons for them. Uh, let's look at a couple of other features for it. Um, if we were to <clears throat> bring in another character, we can change the namespace. We can change the background picture. We can just go select a, a picture on the hard drive. And um, once we put that as the background, it actually embeds that in the picker file. That'll stay in your scene, or you can uh, save it externally to your scene. Um, either way, the background will carry along in the picker. You don't have to you don't have to save the background separately and send it uh, to people. The AnimSchool picker code can only be downloaded from AnimSchool.com, but picker files that you make those are fine to be shared uh, anywhere and by um, in any way. So um, we can save it. If we save this file, it can go out to um, to be used by other people, and it saves it with a .pkr uh, extension. We can save as. We can rename the tab, which is really helpful because now it's named Untitled. But say we rename it and call it uh, My Character, then it uh, has a, a title to it. And if we were to use a different namespace, we could change that as well. So um, we can also hide the toolbox and show the toolbox. There we go. To uh, change the buttons' colors, for instance, and their size. So if we were to select all these buttons, um, we could change all their color to something else. Let's say, but let's say we want to select these, but look at that, we're selecting all of these other ones. What if we only wanted to change the color on these over here without these over here? So we could do that um, by control dragging and selecting those buttons. Now that we have those, we can change those, but that won't change other things. So it, whatever is highlighted at the time will get the change that you are putting in over here. If you want that to be different, then for for all the different buttons that are selected or white, you can um, use the control key and only select those. And that way you can do a unique uh, attribute for just those buttons. Uh, also, there are different ways of changing size. You can also use a um, hotkey. This is the plus and the minus key on your keyboard to change the button sizes. And again, if we do that, just for selected, that's handy too. The round ones mean that there's a multi-selection. You can also label them. So let's say this is called um, this is called uh, lid or something like that. Then uh, <clears throat> when you select a new item, look at that. The title goes away. If you select it again, the title reappears. We're going to be adding features to uh, the picker, but right now, if you want it to be longer, you just put in some spaces there, and then it becomes a, a wider picker button. Another feature that should be in by the time you see this will be the copy and the paste. You can grab a bunch of buttons and paste it into a new picker. Uh, th this button controls whether the text is black or white and, and when it's uh, selected. These are links to Anim School things. You can sign up at Anim School to take a class, at which is a great place because um, oh, kind of world-renowned uh, Characters that have appeal and characters that have a lot of. And these links down here are uh, links to Anim School resources. And uh, if you're interested in learning more, if you think you could uh, raise the level of your uh, skills in some area of 3D animation, we recommend you come and take a class with us. Our characters are well known around the world. We have over 10,000 users of this Malcolm rig here, and uh, our characters are well known for appeal and for super flexibility, hyper flexibility, and the ability to be very expressive. And we teach that in our animation and in our character making classes. And so please come and learn with us. You can uh, look at the character download area or check our regularly updated blog 
or forums to ask questions about the picker or the free rigs. <clears throat> now, um, let's go ahead and open the actual uh, picker for this character. So we're going to do file open and go to the area where the pickers are stored. And we're going to open the um, Malcolm uh, body and face for this version, which is a uh, 109. Okay, so this is the um, picker. Now, um, because it was already made for the Malcolm V109 prefix, it automatically worked. If it, if it hadn't been the same, it would have asked uh, us what character to use it for. Now, uh, so th these are the picker pages. Some of them are fused together where the head and the body are together. And some of them are, are separate. These are two separate pickers, one for the body, one for the face. And I'm just going to go ahead and close this other one here, and it will ask me whether I want to change it. Now, the pickers can be made any size, more or less, and uh, so we're just going to shorten this a little bit. And so this takes up less space. This is a window that goes with Maya. If you if you minimize Maya, it'll go with it. <clears throat> and uh, what, why use a picker in the first place? Well, there are a lot of controls. The closer you get to film level, the more controls you have. And so it can become a little uh, confusing or onerous or distracting to have all these things sitting on the face. So if I turn on a hotkey to turn those on all off, sometimes it's easier to pose with them turned off. So that's one thing, just to sort of have a clean environment. Another thing is when this character is all posed out, it becomes a little tricky to select those uh, all those curves. And sometimes uh, things aren't always neatly aligned like they are right now. Sometimes you might have uh, the hand is, the fist is clenched. And then um, maybe from that angle, you can't get around and select something. You can't see something. And so it's a little bit easier. You always know exactly where the the part is over here and, and just by going over here and clicking on it you can grab all three uh, this way or that way all four that way and it becomes easy to select see it comes easy to remember where something is and to select multiple of them in addition uh, it's easy to select things like uh, the, the entire set or special functions like uh, what maybe want to smooth it we want to we want to have it appear smoother maybe all the way smooth go back to zero so we can do different um, uh, functions on it. For instance, we can get this uh, a pose happen and we say, oh, we want to reset it so it's back to its default. And so it's a quick way to get it, a posed thing back to, um, to where you might want it. And that's just uh, via a script. Okay, so not just buttons, we can always use scripts. So if we right click on any of these script buttons, we get uh, a command uh, interface where we can just put in a Mel or a Python script and we can test it and hit OK. Now, um, so you'll notice that some of these um, some of these scripts will make reference to a certain namespace. So Malcolm v109. Well, if we had brought this in as Malcolm, it would automatically replace that with Malcolm. You can make pickers without um, having that namespace there, but it's not recommended. You really should reference the character in and then make the picker as it currently stands because then it'll know where to replace things in the scripts. Other than, without that, it doesn't know where to put, you know, how to replace all those script names. So, but that's why you use a picker and uh, that, that way you can turn all, everything off and, and sort of quickly work on the face and, and everything's in a predictable place uh, for selection. And it just requires a little learning curve to, for where things are. And for that, you can turn on the the, um, the curves and see things. And you can uh, connect the dots of, of what it means what in the, in the interface. The other thing that's um, very, very handy is being able to tell what you have selected. So if you grab this, you don't really know what you have selected. Let's say I'm going to grab a bunch of stuff here. Maya doesn't isn't very good at showing you what you have selected. You could just do a drag select here, and um, it it's not really apparent from looking at this mess here what you have selected. Whereas in Picker, look at that, it shows you exactly what you have selected. So if, once you get used to what these things, what these buttons mean, 
this will tell you what you have selected. So it's bi-directional where it can actually inform you of what's going on in Maya. So it's an orienting kind of a, a feeling animating with the picker and interacting with the picker that way. So some of these buttons, um, we know about the, the round ones that include multiple buttons, but there's also a script version that selects multiple things. And what that does, it just, we'll just edit the command here. It says uh, select this set called controls. If whatever is in that set called controls, and we can edit that, then uh, it will select them or key them. If we hit this button, it will key everything in that set. There's this uh, set of uh, most and basic, sort of going down the line of selecting fewer things. And uh, that's just if you want to key fewer than everything. But you can also see fewer curves. So we were talking about seeing the curves earlier. Well, what if we wanted to turn off or on or off all the gimbal controls or the hair controls or um, just see fewer controls? Maybe we want to see the only the ones in the most set or only the basic controls. That way it gets a little bit easier to see what the heck is going on. So we can toggle them all. We can see fewer. We can see more or we can turn all of them on, which turns even the tiny little ones around here. So around the eye, for this uh, rig, there's lots and lots of little controls that you can choose to turn on or, or not. If you want to make a new command button, that's really easy too. Just right click and say add a command button, and then you can put uh, whatever command you want here. You can test it out, and that becomes a new uh, command button. Now, if you wanted to make it look like these other uh, script buttons here, you could, uh, let's see, we could select it, change it to some kind of gray color, and uh, we could change the name here. Just, just select it first with the control, and then uh, give it a name. And uh, if you want to buffer the edges a little bit, you can put spaces in, in it. And uh, then it would do something, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Maybe let's change it to... Um, this. We don't really need buttons to do this to, to actually deselect things because anytime you click uh, where there isn't a button, it's going to do the same thing as this uh, clearing. Here's another great feature of Picker is that it's not just for objects. So these are all buttons to control to select controllers, but you can also use it to select uh, subcomponents. So if you go to the subcomponent level um, and select, uh, say, uh, say you've got a ring of of um, polygons that is difficult to select and uh, you want to remember that selection. Well there are some ways to do that but um, with picker it's really easy to do that. We'll just uh, select them and make a button. So uh, this happened to be made with uh, a label on it so we'll just get rid of that label there. But So this is a, a button now that will select uh, a a ring of polygons, not just an object. We can kind of keep buttons like this around to select various uh, things on the on a model, even not just a, a rig. Or we can, of course, use it to select things like um, things like points. So we'll add another button. These will select the points. These will select the polygons. Very handy. And you can put different regions, different colors, to to tell yourself. You know what what it means like the light blue for us is kind of like the the eye area and this is the cheek and the purple is the nose and so going on it, it, they have different uh, meanings just to be able to separate the different areas out um, and again all these scripts do interesting things and um, you can switch back and forth between the the different tabs and uh, kind of work selecting things and animating as you go one nice thing that uh, it it gets around a, a problem where if you um, Let's say you grab the, um, the the IK control here, and you want to uh, let's turn that on. Let's say you want to um, you're over here and you and you just select it, but you now you actually want to rotate it. <clears throat> you can hit the um, rotate hotkey over here, even though you're in the window here, it will properly change over here. So it's well embedded into Maya, and uh, it works quite well with it. One great thing um, <clears throat> about Making the pictures is once you have one that's sort of in the style or the naming conventions of what uh, your characters tend to be, you can easily reuse them. So if we go in and grab another character that has a similar similar naming scheme, okay. 
So let's say we wanted to use um, one of his pickers now for her. That's not really that hard. All we have to do is we're gonna, we could open another one. And uh, let's pretend we don't already have a picker for her. We'll just go and get another one of these two. So this one and this one. So um, right now, they're automatically connected to uh, the Malcolm, not to her. So what we can do is go into Picker and change namespace. Now it will ask us which character we want. Uh, okay, we want Marnie. So now it's connected to her. And if we hit, hit that all, you'll see that actually have all the same uh, named uh, objects. So we could also figure out the ones that are missing because she has extra ones as well. But um, she, yeah, she even has the shirt one. So it's very reusable. And now at this point, what we would just have to do is say, oh, well, maybe, maybe I want to change this background. So we'll go in here and and we just wait a minute for it to read it in. And then um, it's going to um, replace that picture with this other one. So if we want to move all these buttons now, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to select all the buttons around there. And then now that they're selected, I just grabbed them the normal way. I'm going to hold down the control key and click on them and just move them over. So easy. So these other ones didn't get moved. Notice these are script buttons, these little ones here. So in order to move them, we're just going to control, drag, select them, and then control, move them. If you want to move them more precisely, we can also use the arrow keys to move them as well. So um, now, in just a few minutes, we are able to sort of reuse the, these pickers, this uh, picker for another character. We can now rename it and save it out as a different name, because now if we saved it, we're going to save over the wrong one. So we're going to, we're going to save this as a new picker, and we're going to uh, rename it. So we're going to do picker um, rename tab, and we're going to call this one um, my test. And now we have a different, uh, it's, it's going to be saved as a different name, and it has a different name. And we can do the same thing to the face. So these are some of the things you can do with a picker once you uh, once you get familiar with how to use it. Now there's a few other things I haven't shown yet, which one of them is the ability to zoom in. So just like Maya used the very same hotkeys to zoom and pan. So if you uh, are familiar with Maya, then you know that you can use uh, Control, Alt, and then drag left and middle to sort of zoom in, or the right mouse button as well. And if you just use the middle, you can pan around it. So this is good for things like uh, if we go to the face here, maybe we want to zoom in for a while and work on the little tiny things. We want to zoom out, and we can focus on on, on an area that. Um, so it's helpful if you want to make a big picker that's that's really huge for a character that has lots of um, lots of controls. And then if you want to get back to where you were zoom wise, you just hit the uh, H key. And it resets. And those hotkeys are also here. If you re, if you right select, you can see reset view, and F will frame that view or you know make it closer to to the area that you're selecting. And those are right here: reset and frame. Uh, a couple of things you have to be aware of is if you want to, let's say you want to delete this um, this button right here. So I select the button, and then if I hit delete, it's going to delete everything that was white, basically everything that was selected. And now I'm going to hit Control Z. Okay, it worked. It depends on whether you have. Uh, sometimes the focus is on Maya, and it thinks you want to un un undo Maya. So if that ever happens, let's see. Maybe if I have my focus over here, and I go um, delete, and now undo. Yeah. So I did undo, but it, 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 it didn't know, and it's over here in, in Maya, so if that ever happens, you just come over here and hit undo. Uh, but if you just want to delete this button without all the other stuff, then you have to control select it, and then delete it. Hit the backspace key or the or that button there. So you have to be careful, let's say you want to change the size of um, this button here that actually selects all of these. 
If I were to come in here and change the size now, it would change all of them. So if I just want to change the one, then then I just select that one. Okay. Now it has a has a label, so it's only so, so small it can get. But uh, there's just a couple of little things you have to be aware of when you're when you're trying to manipulate multiple objects. And uh, you know, one way you can do it is just <clears throat> make sure that you've got all the objects. You can say um, if you have sets that have all the different things, you can literally come over here and um, do add many buttons and make a button for everything you just selected in the set. And that'll just stretch on. It'll just be this huge tall list. And then you can go in there and make sure that you have a button representing everything. So it's a, it's a good way to, um, um, to use it. And uh, you can put in other scripts. Like this is a script here to select uh, the objects uh, in the mirror side. And this is a uh, one here to mirror the pose. So you can go in here to to the body of Malcolm and um, let's see, uh, select, um, say you want to select the whole arm here, we do uh, mirror the pose. Now if you have a situation where you want to change sort of the contents of especially a, a multi-button, say, say with this one uh, you wanted to change this so it didn't just select these three, maybe you wanted to select this one as well. So what you could do is select that and then uh, shift select this one as well. Now I can right click on this one and say update the button. Now this one is going to include that one when you select it. So you can update uh, what a button does. You can also do that for individual buttons. So these are some of the features you can use. We hope you enjoy it. We're so happy to be able to offer this for free for the community. We hope this gets used by lots of people and, and enjoyed because uh, we had a lot of fun making it and fun using it, and now you'll be able to too. And um, <clears throat> enjoy and tell your friends about Anim School. Thanks very much.